there's a very basic question that we have to answer. Why would anyone play D&D, or indeed any role-playing game? There is really no other dynamic or setup for human interaction outside of years and years of very strict disciplinary study and meditation and other forms of self-release that really provide the essential aspect of what makes role-playing games and Dungeons and Dragons in particular so enjoyable, which is it allows you temporarily and safely freedom from the boundaries and the bondage of the prison of being yourself. Now, I know that sounds really quite outlandish, but hear me out here. When you are engaging in playing a role-playing game, the entire event is designed and necessitates you engaging in interactions with other living, breathing human beings where everyone is agreeing that you are acting as if you are this other character and they are acting as if they are this other character. This isn't exactly like drama or plays where although there's a suspension of disbelief and everybody knows that they're really this other person at the end of the day, they go along with the drama. Because in role-playing games, in Dungeons and Dragons, your actions as this other person change and develop the course of events in a way that never happened before and will never happen again. This is why so many people enjoy playing as stand-ins for characters that they really love from movies and television and books and comics and sometimes just from their own imagination. This is also why very often people will engage, especially at the start, with characters that are heightened, lowered, extended, minimized versions of pretty much who they are every day. And this, if that's what happens, is perfectly valid. Now I can tell you, I have been playing D&D for nearly 40 years, and I have run every edition of the game, and I have run a whole bunch of other editions of other games that you may have heard of. And all other shit you ain't never heard of! <laughs> and I have, wherever I can, whenever I can, played pretty much the exact same character for decades with a different hat and mustache. And that is perfectly fine. And if that's what happens, that's fine. No one will judge you, and everyone has done it. Why is this so powerful? Well, it gives us the ability to explore aspects of ourself that we didn't know we had, we didn't know we needed, or we don't feel safe or comfortable exploring or expressing in our daily lives. Now, this could be something as salacious as our identity of gender or eroticism, as dark and scary as our lust for vengeance and, you know, the expression of our rage. Or it could just be that we want to be a gnome tinker who makes cookies as a job while living in a giant balloon that's in the shape of a big tree that has an interdimensional apparatus that allows you to jump between times, spaces, dimensions, and planes of existence. You know, that's fine. Now, the byproduct of this is that we gain confidence in exploring areas of ourselves that we weren't familiar with and exploring them in circumstances we are unfamiliar with and exploring new areas that we are unfamiliar with with circumstances we are unfamiliar with in 
personas we are unfamiliar with. And that is a very powerful tool for self-discovery, self-acceptance, and self-emancipation. On top of that, we get to do that with other people. And on top of that, the very process of engaging in this type of play is truly beyond words in terms of how you get to experience the moment truly free of the bounds of your normal plebeian ego. It is an experience which no one in this lifetime should be bereft of. And on the off chance that there are children or young adults watching, or the parents of children of young adults, or children and young adults watching, giving this video to their parents, here are some of the lateral skills that people learn as kids or grown-ups who act like kids, which is also very common, when they play role-playing games like D&D for extended periods of time. Kids get better at math. Kids get better at reading. Kids get better at comprehension of reading and at writing. Kids get better at phenomenological abstraction of concepts and rules and also get better at developing systems for abstracting and conceiving of rules and phenomenologies. As well as they get better at engaging with other people in group dynamics. Being able to read nonverbal cues as well as, and for some of us who are neurodivergent, that's very helpful, but also being able to read people's nonverbal likes and dislikes, but also being able to read people's nonverbal likes and aversions, as well as understanding how to engage in group dynamics where their fun is maximized, not at the expense of other people, but in service of other people. And that is a diamond talent that every child should know. So I hope that helps. And on the off chance that this video really resonates with people and it gets a thousand likes, I'll do a more in-depth version of it and I'll post it like here. But until that time, uh, stay until the next video, which will be about what is D&D, and then we're going to explain how to create a character after we explain the basics of what it is and how you play. Now, for now, thank you for being here. I'll see you later. GR, player base. Ciao, ciao.